Okay. Boom. Okay, perfect. And we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a very special edition of Off the Record on the People's Podcast this eve this afternoon. We have an incredible guest with us today, one who we are very humbled to, to have take time out of his busy schedule to come give us some amazing information as well as inspiration. And that is none other than the great brother, Brother Martin F. Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum salam, wow. sir. This means a, a, a extremely, this is a, a blessing that you would take. It means a lot to me and my family and the viewing audience of the People's Podcast that you would come on and have a great conversation with us today. Uh, first of all, um, assalamu alaikum once again. Wa alaikum salam. Yes, sir. Now, Brother Martin. Uh, before we get started, I always uh, we have the same, you know, the, the majority of the same talking points. But I just want to give a quick, quick introduction to you. I, I wanted people to know that when I was um, a junior FOY, uh, my sister Miriam says I'm making, but when I was coming, oh, I went with my father to, to Los Angeles, um, and I saw something I had never seen, even though I was from Chicago and I grew up. I saw the junior FOY popping living together just a certain kind of movement they had going on and then i saw you training them and teaching them and they had it was just something i, I it was just something about the way it was the setup of my, my house number 27 and the mts that it was just phenomenal like i was impressed i was thoroughly impressed and i wanted to thank you you know for putting that together and showing me love when i came out there with my father because i went back to chicago on five they was doing out there so that was that that was something that meant a lot to me and my um and my, you know, junior FY days. So that, you know, I want to give you credit for many things, but especially that the work that you did with the junior FY in Los Angeles. Uh, we're gonna and we're gonna get into that later. But I just want to let you know that uh, that man, that was huge. I came back to I came back Thank to you. Chicago. That was that was huge. Uh, when did you first hear the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad? <laughs> Brother, I first came into the teachings when I, matter of fact, when I first heard the teachings. Well, I have to say it was nineteen. Like 84, I think I was about in the, I think I was about 11 years old back mm -hmm. then. And uh, this is around the time when Jesse Jackson was running for president. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Secret Service wouldn't uh, secure Jesse Jackson at that time. And the FOI was around. It. And my mother, my mother, um, woke me up out of the middle of the night at about, mm, it was about 12, 30, one o'clock in the morning. I'm 11 years old. I got to go to school the next day. And the minister was on CNN speaking. Mm. And she woke me up and she told me to get in the bed with her. So I got in the bed with my mother and she had me watching this light-skinned man on TV I had never seen before. Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized that it was the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and they had these brothers standing around him. And I had never heard anybody speak like that before. So at 11, I heard it, I was like, wow, went back to sleep and, uh, and got up and went to school the next day. But when I was around 16, it was a brother, I was in Montgomery, Alabama, and it was a brother named Brother Abdul and I have to give him his respect and honor to this day. That was the first brother I ever saw in person with the, uh, that was suited and booted, black suit, white shirt, red bow tie, and he mm. was on the school bus. Me, I'm clowning. I'm like, where you going, to the prom or something? Mm, mm, and and mm. the brother responded, he said, he said, no sir, brother, very sternly. He said, I'm with the Honorable Minister Louis Farcom. Mm. So I started thinking, I'm 16 now, I said, what? I said, Farcom, Farcom. I said, I heard that name before. And I had to remember back when I was 11 and my mother had me watching them on TV. So the brother said, yes, I, I'm going to a meeting, brother. He said, and, and you can come if you like to. So at 16, I was hitting a, every other spot in the city and you know, moms didn't have no problem with it. I said, all right, let me go check with my mother. And, uh, he said, all right, I'll come pick you up. Now, Trip, though, 
brother made his word bond. He came and picked me up. But at 16, it was weird because brother came and knocked on my door on time. But when I looked out the door, he had a brother standing in the driveway with a bow tie on. It was two more brothers out on the curb with bow ties on. Hey, I'm like, hey, hey, no, nah, I ain't going nowhere with y'all. <laughs> I thought it was a kidnapping. He said, no, sir, it's okay, brother. These are your brothers. I said, all right. So, you know, I felt a little more confident after he said that. And I got in and I went to the mosque and I was just mesmerized. Uh, especially at the end of the meeting, one of the sisters gave me a piece of bean pie and it was over. Mm, mm, mm. But that was that was how I first came in. And then um, after graduating high school, I went to the military uh, for a while. Then I went to Grambling State University. And when I was at Grambling, this was, this was 1994, uh, Dr. Khaled Abdul Muhammad came to Gramlin State University and I was sitting front row, front center. And this was right around the time when Dr. Khaled, he was still in line. Okay, okay. But about to fall out of line. <laughs> right of, I, I, call, I, call, I called him right before he tripped. Um, but he had all of these big pictures and he was teaching from these big pictures. He had the, the brothers holding up and the way he was talking, I had never heard anybody talk like that. And the, the way that he raised up the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan's name and spoke of him with such love. I had never heard anybody talk that strong and the way the brothers were moving around him. Mm. I had never seen no black men move like that. And I was mesmerized by the military movement of the men. Yes, sir. So yes, sir. quick, I'm a fast forward. Oh, so at that meeting at Grandma, after the, Dr. Khaled got finished speaking, I ran up and I'm trying to shake his hand, but the brothers wouldn't let me get to Dr. Khaled. Mm. So I'm, I'm mad with the brothers. I'm like, I'm, I'm upset. I'm like, man, I don't know how I'm supposed to get down there. How I'm supposed to, he about to leave. So there was an NOI student association on campus. I linked up with them. Uh, 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 and 30 days later, it was in New Orleans, the Superdome, mm. that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was holding all men's meet. Mm. 30 days after Dr. Khaled came to Grambling, at the Superdome in New Orleans, they rented, we chartered a bus from Grambling, Louisiana, all the way from, that's in the North Louisiana to all the way to New Orleans down South. And uh, we pulled up in the bus and it was daytime and we got off the bus, brother, I'm telling you, it was sisters wrapped all around the Superdome. Mm. Now this is all men's meeting, but it's all women outside. They holding up signs talking about go black man go we love you black man and I never saw nothing like that in life when I walked in it was just brothers embracing each other hugging each other giving each other that brother I, I had never seen that so then the minister comes out and hey I ain't spooky or nothing but I promise you bro to me my first time seeing the minister and it, it seemed like he almost floated out on stage and I saw how the brothers came out around him. I'm still watching the military movement of that 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 E team. How they move? I, I was mesmerized by the military training. And at that point, after that meeting, I was crying, boo hoo, and I couldn't. I didn't un even understand myself why I couldn't control my tears. They just kept coming the whole meeting. And I, I didn't understand the feeling. So I got back and um, I linked up with the NOI Student Association and really got active with that. And all I wanted to do was join the ranks. So um, I had a girlfriend in college at that time. and She was from uh, Compton, California. And we went on a vacation out to Compton. And 
all I wanted to know when I went to the hood, I was like asking, asking all the home, you know, where the mosque at? They, you know, they told me, oh, that's over there on Rosecrans and Greenlee. Mm. Uh, um, no, Green on Long Beach Boulevard and uh and, and Greenlee. Um, so I went to the mosque. I remember it was on a Thursday. First time going to the mosque on a Thursday. I ain't know no better. I just went knocking on the door. I figured out where it was, and there was a brother named uh Brother John. They call him Brother Yaya. Um, he came to the door and he said, Yes, sir, brother, how can I help you? And I said, brother, I want, I said, I want to be a Muslim. And then he said, he looked me up and down. He said, oh, is that right? <laughs> I said, yeah. He said, all right, we'll see. He said, so come back tomorrow at about seven o'clock and we'll see about that. So I showed up at 645 and, um, and it wasn't what I expected. I came, it was a study group night. They were sitting around in a circle. Everybody was in, was in, was in regular clothes. I was like, that wasn't Dr. Colin B. That wasn't Minister Fark. I was like, what is this? I, I didn't understand. So I, I sat through the meeting. They were talking. It was like, cool. Remember, I'm like 19 years old at this time. Nine, uh, and so, yeah, that wasn't cool to me. But they were like, come back on Sunday. And when I came back on Sunday, that was when I first came and I saw and I met the captains and the ministers and I saw the 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 the, the rest of the FOI and I was the first time I ever saw a MGT. They were in their white garments and a lot of my witness, I thought these were angels out of heaven or something. Cause I'd, I'd never seen no sisters looking so pure and in in their in their white and they silk garments. And I remember my first mosque meeting uh sitting there trying to listen to the minister of course i'm observing because i'm not in the mosque meet and the brother came up to me and whispered in my ear he said brother keep your eyes straight don't be looking at the sisters bro <laughs> but i had never seen nothing like that before and i saw so i was just mesmerized but i was stuck and then i looked up and i saw big brother uh captain shaheed was in the field you know what i'm saying you that's amazing in itself. When you're looking at a giant in the building, then I heard uh, our, 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 our current regional uh, uh, captain, Captain Oliver over there, he's giving instructions to brothers. And I was like, who was that bald head brother? Mm -hmm. uh, but he was regulating. The, those were the captains that I came up under when I came in the mosque. So if I'm, I'm going to cut it short, but as we speak, I, I got to give respect and honor to the military and to the captains that came before me. And that probably won't be the last ones I mentioned, but the captains, the captains, the captain, salute the Captain Shaheed, Captain Oliver. Those are the brothers who gave me the foundation of my training. And uh, I'm grateful to Allah for them always. They showed me what it was that I fell in love with when I watched that military movement around the minister and which, which allowed me and prepared me for what you just spoke on to be able to aid and assist the younger brothers. And to this day, to this day, we still pushing that line. And uh, I'm here in Montgomery, Alabama right now and the South got something to say. So yes, sir, you're, yes, gonna hear, you're gonna hear about it coming out of Montgomery as well. Oh, but, uh, yes, sir. Beautiful. And some people are showing you love, Brother Martin, uh, all across the country. My sister, my sister says something like him. Sister Bera says he's a stand-up brother and she loves and she and she loves you. Uh, brother Sai says his, you know, his, his big brother in line out the cage. Sister Kulsum Akbar says all praises to a lot of beautiful spirit. And please let us know what city you all are from. I can't wait to put this on YouTube. Let us know what city you're from so we can tap in. Boom. All praises to a lot. Yes, sir. Okay, you great. Yes, sir. So, so Brother Mark, um, my next question yes, for sir. you is, how did your family and friends feel about you accepting the teachings? That's been, that's been one of the greatest challenges of this whole entire journey and soul journey. Um, you know, coming under the teachings of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and really being a student, you learn to understand that 
everybody is not going to come this way. But we've been taught and trained in such a way that we know how to talk to our people, utilizing the scriptures from the Bible, from the Quran, and being a soldier, when you're in the field, you hear every adverse reaction, everything that could be said negatively. So you grow a thick skin. Mm, mm, mm. Your family doesn't understand because your family knows everything about you. Your family still wants you to be the same old Negro. When you do change and go through things, they don't understand that change. It's weird to them because now they feel like they have to treat you different or they have to move different around you. So that's always been a thing, especially uh, when it comes to dinner time. They like, oh, this nigga here don't eat no pork, <laughs> you know? And so it's a, you know, they clown, they clown, but uh, after a while, after a while, they begin to respect it. And one thing they realize after all of these years, you know, practicing the diet of how to eat to live, um, it shows in your skin, it shows in, 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 in your physical features. Um, it doesn't age you. So that's one of the things that my family who may have had a negative outlook, they look and they say, I bet you can't guess how old he is. They always put in bets. You know, they still think I'm 20 something. Oh, praise is due to a lot. <laughs> yes, long sir. Time. yes, sir. Wonderful. And um, love you, Morrison Sabira. And uh, Troy says he's from Philly. Uh, some Lake and family top of the clock. And people are just showing love from all over the country. Brother Daniel E. from Chicago, who's out in Arizona right now. Thank you, brother. Thank everybody who always shows love. Okay, yes, sir. Brother Mark, what was it like for you uh, the first time you met the, uh, the Most Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan? The first time I met him personally? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Or, what was that like? Just... Wow. Um, brother, the, there's... The first time I met the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan personally, I, or saw him or was in close proximity, I was holding posts. Mm -hmm. It would, really wasn't much of a conversation. It's, uh, it's the acknowledgement. The minister is very aware at all times of his surroundings. And to be acknowledged by the minister when you are being dutiful and doing it right, just that head nod or that smile or for him just to reach and just touch you or tap, tap. brother, that, it, it meant the world to me. I do, I do anything to help the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So it's overwhelming, but speaking to him, speaking to him or speaking with him, I know that I'm talking to the greatest man on the planet. I know that I'm talking to the voice of God. So it's all humility when speaking to the Honorable Minister. It's an indescribable feeling being in the presence of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. I don't have words to answer that question. Wonderful. All praise due to a lot. Yes, sir. Well, uh, speaking of, you know, from Grambling, uh, I guess Louisiana then going to Compton and being trained in all of these uh, men's onlys and tight situations. Has there ever been a time where you were faced with fear? And if so, how did you overcome that fear? I don't think that, I don't think that fear, I, I think the training got the fear out of me. Mm -hmm. I came up under some wonderful captains. I got to go back to that. Yes, sir. That I didn't see that in them. I came up under some great captains, you know, um, and I, let me just shout, let me just, through my sojourn, I, let me tell you the captains that I've been under, why, why fear is not a factor. Captain Wali, may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Oh, please. Captain Shaheed, Captain Oliver, y'all know what it is, they, 
See, let me talk about Oliver for one second. Brother Captain Oliver, brother student, regional Captain Oliver. He was my example. He was my example. I don't know what anybody think or what anybody say about him. He was almost like my nemesis, almost. That brother taught me positively and negatively at the same time. Mm -hmm. I've never had another man beside my own father that was on my head as much as brother Captain Oliver. Yes, and I've always looked up to and admired him. This is a brother who, in my beginning stage, he had businesses. He was an entrepreneur, a black entrepreneur way back when. Mm. This I'm I'm and having money. He pulling up in something sweet every time we see him. Him, you know what I'm saying? Like he had business. He had he was putting he was putting us on the money. He was teaching and training us how to do, how to go. And when we had opposition in any form that it came in, I've never seen Brother Captain Oliver back down from nothing. It's almost as if he always knew what to do every time, each and every time. And I watched that. I watched that. I emulated that. And that's exactly what I strove to be. Just like that. Just like that. Because I never saw fear in him. When the police came to the mosque, uh, I, okay, you said fear. I got a story. I'm, I'm going to tell you one time. We were in Mars 27, and it still wasn't fear, but it's the closest thing I could think of to it. We were at Mars 27, and Sister Ava, Sister Minister Ava, National Spokesperson Ava, was speaking at Mars 27 in Los Angeles. And the mosque was jam-packed. Cars are lined up, up and down the street in every direction. We on post outside. The police came out deep and they sent a bunch of tow cars and they started towing believers' cars away. And I was outside on post. So I, I spoke with the police. If, if that's the word. Yeah, I spoke with the police and I asked them, you know, I explained to them that this is a mosque meeting and, you know, like, please stop towing the cars away. And they gave me a few choice words and they paid me no attention and really was quite disrespectful. So I, I sent some brothers in. I said, go get Brother Captain Oliver. And the brothers came back. They came back with Oliver and Captain Shahid. And when they came back, they asked the officers what was going on. And they said what they said to me. And I don't know what happened after that, but I stepped back and no more cars were told. Um, the police, the, the brothers were ordered outside. The police were run off the block and um, I was given in, no, I was given the instruction to go inside. And my duty and responsibility was whatever goes down to make sure that all the sisters and the children got out the mile safely. If there was everything called fear, I feared making a mistake or an error with the women and children and not being able to carry out that instruction. But I made a plan, we mapped it out. And um, brother, those captains fearlessly shut the police down. Okay. You know, with, with the FOI. So yeah, it, it's, it's no fear when, when, when we have the training. That's why the training is so important. It takes the fear out of it. Beautiful, yes, sir. And people are all over the country are saying a lot of walk by and bearing witness. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. Excellent, excellent. And thank you. And uh, brother Mark, we have a uh, we have a lot more. Uh, I don't want to say a few more questions, uh, but we have a lot of questions for you. But we have a quick sixty second commercial break for all of the sponsors 
of the People's Podcast this uh, amazing month of Ramadan and Ramadan Mubarak to all of the believers all across the country. If you all would like to be a sponsor or donor, please um, cash at the People's Podcast. Uh, starting with, uh, here we go, one second, here we go. Starting with my brother, Rashad, street premiere, media production. He has a 4K camera and a drone. He does television and film editing. Thank you all. If you need any of that, please reach out to him. My sister, Miriam, ABC, I Love Me children's book and coloring book, both of which are available on Amazon. And she just released a Spanish version of that. Please reach out to get ABC, I Love Me. My sister Naima, Stay On Point Dance Academy, LLC. She teaches ballet virtually to young girls all across the country and right here in the studio of Atlanta, Georgia. Rock Communications, if you're working on a book, please reach out to Rock Communications for copy editing, project management, content development, and media relations. Rock Communications, thank you very much. Fashion Guides, um, uh, Urban Streetwear for Young Men and Boys, 314-329-6009. Our brother always keeps you dressed and fresh and dripping in the best of fashion. Student Minister Robert L. Muhammad, conflict mediation, squashing the beef throughout the Southwest region. He does a phenomenal job. Also his wife, Sister Fudia Muhammad, children of the Most High, giving birth to a, a, a God in the science of child rearing. Make sure you get that book. Sister Sherry Muhammad, AsiaticMinds.com. Uh, she teaches STEM virtually with young kings and queens all across the country. AsiaticMinds.com, please sign your children up. Brother Kenneth, Bowtie Maker Extraordinaire. He'll ship bow ties to you anywhere in the nation. Thank you very much. Dr. Henry M. Carter right here in Atlanta, Georgia's King Henry's Turkey Legs. Brother Rashad Muhammad, COVID-19 Disinfecting service, uh, Cleaning Services out of Chicago. My father's book, A Soldier in the Movement of Christ, Abdusharif.com. And last but not least, my two books, Cleopatra, which is a children's book, and No Father, No Excuse, both of which are available on Amazon. Thank you all for every uh, sponsorship and donation all across the uh, country. Thank you very much. Okay, right back to our brother, Brother Martin. Okay, now, Brother Martin, um, people are showing you a lot of love, saying Ramadan Kareem and the mighty FOI, praise be to a lot of soldiers. Ramadan Mubarak, man. And GCC everywhere. You know, we need this kind of motivation in military. Um, okay, boom, perfect. What has been, you know, let's talk about the Mayman March. What was the climate like leading up to the Mayman March, and how did it personally impact you? Brother, I didn't make the Million Man March. My daughter, my oldest daughter was born on September 14th, 1995. And I was broke. I couldn't afford to make it to the million man. Everything I had, uh, you know, that was the same year. I had just come into the mosque in 1994. And when I came in, I came in with a girlfriend that was pregnant. And uh, wow, I'll never forget, uh, it was brother Captain Leroy. May Allah be pleased with him. Uh, he was. Come on, your phone. Say brother, hey, you, you, you remember Captain Leroy the shark. He say, brother, we don't have no girlfriends in the nation of Islam. He say, you can get with this or you can get with that. <laughs> and uh, so um, at 19 years old, trying to, you know, having a child and just coming in, I didn't get to make it. But I sat there, hold my baby in my arms and watched it on TV. I was sick and sad that I didn't make the Million Man March, but uh. You know, I was grateful that uh, Allah had blessed me with my first child. All praise to Allah. Yes, sir. And Brother Thomas Al Malik says, Martin F. Muhammad, I'm making brother good interview on the People's Podcast. Thank you all for watching. And please let us continue to let us know what city uh, you all are from all across the country. Boom. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, trial. What has been your greatest trial and how have you been able to overcome that trial? Wow, my greatest trial, brother, has been um, probably this this whole domestic situation. Trying to to get a wife in the nation of Islam, the MGT, to aid and assist in this mission, has the preparation, mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, to deal with. Uh, uh, something of this magnitude when you are dedicated to the rise and resurrection of our people you 
it's incumbent upon us that we have to have a proper help me. Um, I've traveled, I've been all over the country, um, trying to push a line for the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And the biggest thing that I've had to do to help bring balance to continue is I had to get a help me to help me in this hour. And uh, so overcoming that and getting one that I feel and deem is worthy to, uh, not that I feel is worthy, but it's absolutely worthy because she's in the MGT and GCC class and exercises her role as much as I exercise my role. That is the thing that we must overcome. That's the thing that we do because we can't travel this road solo. It don't work. You, we don't know ourselves. The greatest trial comes when you are trying to make two one. It's it's uh that's the trial. That's the biggest one that I think I've overcome by taking the step to go in that direction. I'm not gonna say I've overcome because I'm still going through it. Okay. But I ain't dead yet, and I hope she don't kill me. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. Well, what it, what has been your greatest joy in life? Outside Brother, of the outside of the teachers, I know you're gonna say the teachers. Outside of the teachers, what's your greatest joy? The greatest <clears throat> gotta be. It's gotta be my children. It's 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 my children. My um. My daughter. My daughter um, from my ex-wife, who is a, a, a registered MGT out of Detroit, Michigan. While she was pregnant with my daughter, she, um, she undercame some type of, what, do you, what what's the, what do you call it? A, a, she, an autoimmune disease uh, while she was pregnant. And we didn't understand what it was at the time, you know, but she went from probably 135 pounds tops being pregnant to within like a four day period, she blew up to 175 pounds. Mm. And I watched this with my own eyes, 135 pounds to 175 pounds in four days, pregnant. So we rushed her to the hospital, didn't understand what was going on. And basically when, uh, when we got to the hospital, um, she had to get airlifted from the hospital that we were at after further investigation and they sent her to another hospital. And once she got to that hospital, the doctor said, uh, the doctor walked into the room and by that time, her, her mother was present. She had a daughter that was nine years old at the time. They were in the room. The doctor walked in and said, uh, Mrs. Muhammad, um, Mrs. Muhammad, we're going to do everything that we can to, uh, to save you. But the first thing we got to do is take the baby. So when he said that, I walked up to the doctor. And I tapped him on his elbow and I asked him to step outside in the hallway. And when I asked him that, her, my ex-wife's mother, she came out with me as well. And so, you know, she, she could bear me witness that I said to the doctor, um, what do you mean that you got to take the baby? I said, there's nothing dying in that room, not unless you're going to be next. So I advise you to go back to the drawing board and go figure something out and then come back and talk to me and don't come back until then. It, it probably wasn't the nicest thing I could have said, but I meant every word of it. And by, uh, by the grace of Allah, um, another brother, um, after I'd already said what I said, I, it set a, it set things in particular motion. 
but it was uh oh Allah, I'm forgetting that thing. I'm forgetting the brother captain's name, but he gave me some wise advice. There was a brother captain in Phoenix. Um, I think his name's brother. Oh, anyway, he told me, he told me to go get with the, the chaplain of the hospital. So I went and got with the chaplain of the hospital and I had, uh, we, he drew up some papers and I had the doctors to sign the papers where they had to sign over, like, what do you call it? The sign over my wife's rights to me because they had my wife up in the room and they kept asking her if they could stick a needle in her stomach talking about she was going to get blood clots or something like that and they kept talking about sticking a needle now she's pregnant I didn't understand why would you stick a needle in a pregnant woman's stomach I'm like no you can't do that but she so she was so out of it they kept coming around, sticking her with needles, checking blood, sticking her with needles, every 10, 15 minutes. And she was exhausted. She was in so much pain. Um, but the brother captain told me, he, uh, she signed it over. So anything that the doctors asked, they had to come ask me. They couldn't ask her no more. So I wasn't letting nothing happen. I made sure that my mother-in-law stayed in the room. So long story short, I put in a phone call. No, I was leaving the hospital and I got a phone call. And it was uh um and I asked Dr. Patina to look in and see what's going on. Now this sister was uh she's a medical doctor as well as a naturopathic doctor. She came and looked in on the situation. And she read the charts and she said, brother, she needs to get out of here. So um, after a while, and a, it's a long story, but we got her out. We got, we, 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 we got her home. We put her under Dr. Patina's care. And on October 16th, which was Atonement Day, 1996, my daughter was born. And that's was the greatest joy because the white man said she he, he was gonna kill her. And um I had to put it down. So I thank Allah that that was my greatest joy seeing my daughter born October 16th, that atonement day of 1996. Beautiful. 2006, 2006, I'm sorry. Beautiful. I didn't know where that story was going. I'm so happy they had a positive ending. I was <laughs> I got nervous. Yeah. Yeah, they, they man, they try to kill my baby, brother. All praises due to Allah. Beautiful man, that's powerful. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, 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 so, much, so much love. Shout nah, out to she's a striving junior MGT uh, in Detroit. Yes, sir. Beautiful. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, yes, and sir. man, uh, brother Martin, you you bringing out all kind of people. Who, who I've never seen in the comments before. Thank you very much. Thank you to my sisters who always watch our praise with Allah, sister. Aisha, always showing love. Ramadan Mubarak, brother Daniel, Allah, Wakbar, brothers from Phoenix saying Allah's testimony, praise be to Allah, and um, beautiful. Bro okay. And brothers from brothers from Phoenix, y'all got to help me. What is his name, brother? The brother captain, the light-skinned brother. He's the one that gave me the wisdom on that day. The quiet spoken. Ah, oh, Allah's going to give me. We'll work it out, brother Mark. We'll work it out. Yes, yeah. sir. Okay, my next question is, well, speaking of your, your daughters and, uh, you know, being a father, what advice would you give to future fathers? Just be there. Be present. However, whenever, however, do what you can, however you can, the best you can. Just be present. And not only be a father to your own, be a father to those who don't have one. That's the job of the FOI. He say, the FOI is supposed to be the type of man that when women see him, they want him to be their husband. The FOI is supposed to be the type of man that when men see him, they want to be just like him. The FOI is supposed to be the type of man that when they see him, children want him to be their father. So that means we got to be examples out here to our, to our people. So just be present. We have to be present. Beautiful. All praises due to Allah. Yes, sir. Okay, now, Brother Martin, let's go back to me. Uh, my father speaking at Mosque number 27. 
I, I'm honored to go hold post. Uh, they, they, he's like, man, you know, I guess in some other room, he was like, you got to see these Junior F. Wild. Here. They, Josh, you got to see this. You got to see this. I go in there. I see Brother Martin F. I see a boom, boom, out of whole post. It. Mannerisms, the way y'all, it was, it was just, that I got that full NTS experience, if you will, when I was out there for a weekend. What, what gave you such a passion to care about the youth? Brother, if, you know, this is the way I see it, the way I call it, I don't know who would uh, call it any other way, but I remember um, in LA, we had a lot of youth, a lot of juniors. And, you know, we had a very large mosque at one time in, in Los Angeles. And I would see the juniors go up to the balcony in the mosque and basically be up there just messing around. We had juniors that had long braids and dreads and, you know, they was just up there clowning and just acting a fool up there every day. And I'm, we like 40 some, 50 some deep with children in the mosque. I said, this is ridiculous. What are y'all doing? And most of them, probably 90% of them were children of believers. But they look worse than the lost fan. So I had an idea and I just went up one day and I got them all down and we got organized in ranks. And once that started going on, they started liking, liking that. They was already together acting a fool. So put them together and put them in ranks. Then we went further and brothers had an FOI house. Brothers started living together. We had about five or six brothers living in an apartment. And then 10, 15 other brothers coming over to the apartment. So they became a self-contained unit. They were teaching and training one another. They would challenge each other with the teachings. They were drilling together. They were going through actual facts, student enrollment. I'm talking, these are 14, 15, 16 year old brothers, Thir some of them 13. But took them to the barber shop, got the, got the, got the braids chopped off, got them with FOI cuts, you know. Then you saw an army of junior fruit. So when they were assembled, brother minister, we were at Mars 27. You had minister Tony. You know, so the brothers start calling themselves MTS. Okay, okay. Mosque 27, Minister Tony Soldiers. And it was in Los Angeles, you know, Los Angeles deep in gang culture. So the way I was speaking to the juniors, hey, right or wrong, I'm just saying, this is what it is. I told them, I say, uh, if you're going to bang, Bang Islam. You got bloods, you got crips. That you can't move in Los Angeles without running into some set. I I I put it out there like, nah, y'all, this that this the FOI. Bang Islam. So they was banging MTS. When they went to school, if they had an issue at school, even the sisters, if they had an issue at school, you don't have an issue at school. Because if you got an issue at your school, all the junior FOI is gonna show up at your school. We had they they did that once. Once it was somebody that was given, somebody was given a junior MGT some trouble. Lost found, you know, at school was given a junior MGT some trouble. And the junior FOI showed up about 40 deep. And uh one of the older brothers went in and talked with the principal and the guidance counselors and explained to him that, look outside, those are her brothers. Now, if you don't want her brothers and her uncles to come up here, y'all might want to leave her alone. And it, there was no more problems, you know, <laughs> period. So they, 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 they held on to that. And now those juniors out there, they're running schools. They run the martial arts training. These are some of the greatest brothers that some of them are on, uh, on the minister's team. 
NFA studios, everything that you see that just about is came out of some of those that were the best in the West. You know, he, those brothers, those brothers are amazing because of the training, the military training uh, uh, instills discipline, which is, allows you to go anywhere that you want to go. And that's what I was trying to show you when you came through with your father. And I knew that was an important piece. I wanted you to see how they were moving with Minister Tony. These were these juniors were moving better than grown men. You say, you say, you say. They had the spirit to do it. So when you saw it, you took it back. And you put that military drill down. And now Atlanta is what Atlanta is. What you've done from looking at the best in the West, you know, West Coast and those, you know, got to they. Bro, y'all did that. Y'all been doing that. And 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 I'm so happy that you caught on to that. And uh uh and that spread and it spread into junior FOI across the nation. New York got set, Atlanta. Matter matter of fact, I think it was an instruction came out after LA, after LA was assembled and everybody saw how they were moving, that everybody to get juniors. I think that's how it happened. And that's when everybody got assembled. Yeah. So, oh, we trendsetters around here. Yeah, 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 we, we we did that. Yeah, we, yeah, we set it off. Yes, sir. Beautiful, all praise due to I and Amber Lamar, and you are receiving so many comments in it. Uh, please get back. I can't wait to put this on YouTube as well. And people are showing you love all across the country with their testimonies. And and uh, Brother Martin will be addressing these in the comments if you want to and go back to speak to some of these people. Brother Martin, yes. I had another question for you. Um, you told me once about you going to uh, getting into farming and you kind of get into a, like a little situation when you first went on a farm where it was like, you know, you didn't know you didn't know how the people was going to treat you when you got on the farm. And you had to like, you know, show, you know, I guess, you know, the FOI, how the FOI get down. Can you let us know what it was like when you got into farming? Well, this that one. <laughs> <laughs> this, that, this that one. OK. It's, it's 2022, and um, we're at war. We're not we at war, but you see there's war going on around the world. Um, we've been at war, being Black in America for the last 400 some years. Yeah. But every battle doesn't show up in front of our face all the time. So sometimes we go, we go, we go back to sleep and we act like, is good, like we didn't overcame or something until it hit you in the face. So I was blessed to um, acquire land. And by the time I um, went there to survey it and, you know, to take charge of the land, there were um, white people all over the place hunting. They were up in trees and they jumping out on me, confronting me, asking me what I'm doing there. Mm -mm. This is my land. <laughs> and so I'm asking them, what are they doing there? So they, and I'm telling them, look, this is my land. I need y'all, you know, to leave. So I don't know if y'all ever seen like white people like really mad, but <laughs> it's a, it's a trip. <laughs> it's a trip. So they really, really mad and they really got guns. And I'm really out there empty handed talking about this is mine and I need you to leave. So it wasn't a situation that made sense to me. This was, I'm in a rural area. The closest call to the FOI was going to take four hours to get there. Mm. Um, so me listening to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and, uh, and, applying practical sense. Um, I applied the second amendment to my movement and I've been allowed to move around safely, securely. I was able to secure my land and, you know, I was able to level up um, in the midst of madness. And we have to be mindful that we have to protect what we own. All praise due to Allah. You know, we don't, 
have no need nor reason to be walking around um, the streets or these cities um, armed up for no reason. But when you own something and you got something to lose, it would behoove you to make sure that you have security in place, whether that be cameras or whatever it takes to make sure that whatever you spend your money, your time, your energy, whatever possessions or people that you have, that no harm can come to them, whatever you have to do. So let's be mindful of that. And in, in, in that context, that we must protect what we own. Absolutely. Period. Yes, sir. So, so you're safe. So what you're saying is you were safe and everything is okay now. Yes, sir. <laughs> All praises due to a lot. Yes, sir. And 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 and, and everything is training. The fruit mm -hmm. of Islam is the military training given okay. to the men who belong, is the name of the training given to them. Does the military is the name of the military training given to the men who belong to Islam in North America? Yes, sir. Military yes, sir. training implies war, tactics, That's right. maneuvers. That's right. If we don't understand that, then you probably not training. So training does not stop. Okay. We have to train in all disciplines, all sciences. Martial sciences is a science. Absolutely. So salute to brother C. Joe that's over in Atlanta. Of course. Salute to those great captains that are trainers of men. And salute to all the soldiers who come up under those great trainers of men who are not going or falling for the okie doke. Beautiful. Yes, sir. Okay, great. And Brother Martin, people are showing you love saying FOI training. Um, also, people were mentioning lions out the cage in the comments. Will, will, will we ever see a, a, a return to you like doing a radio show or anything like that? Brother, we, we were forerunners probably for what everything that you see now mm. you know i believe we probably would have been bigger than the breakfast club mm. Mm. i believe we probably would have been bigger than uh the brilliant idiots or 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 anything had we uh uh, uh held that long but we we tried something that was different and unique with the intention of fully reaching the brothers and sisters that are in the streets and bringing them in line as joint forces with the FOI. That was our complete uh, mission as far as I understood it, as a lion out the cage, as a founder. Um, whenever you begin something, we have to make sure that we remain true to our principles, our standards, and where we, where, what we originally stood for. Um, we have to hold each other accountable at all times as brothers and sisters. And we have to know that the devil within and without is always present. Yes, sir. So we have to be aware at all times. So we did something and the devil was present within and without. And um, we made a great progress. And the problem, 31, from the problem book. Yes, sir from where lines out the cage originates, it still hasn't been answered. So lines out the cage is never over. We just need a remix. Okay, great. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wonderful. And people are continue to show you love, saying all praise to you for you representing, uh, defending the minister on social media. Excellent. Uh, my next question is music. You've gone from Grambling and going to Compton and now back in the South. If you could choose a favorite album of all time, which album would you choose, sir? Of all time? Yes, sir. Oh, favorite 
Brother, my favorite album of all time, I think, is the gonna have to be the one that made me fall in love with hip hop. Um, it would have to be Criminal Minded. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. KRS One, Criminal Minded. That album just blew me away, brother. I, I, no, no, no. Between that and uh, it takes a nation of millions to hold us back by Public okay. Enemy. Okay, brother. That sent me in a whole different universe hearing that. I grew up, um, before I even knew about the nation, I wanted to be Professor Griff. Mm, okay. I really okay. wanted that. I thought that's what it was. When I saw the S1Ws, I wanted to be that. Mm, and mm. That's, what I, that's what I saw when I saw the FOI. I, I equated the two, and I said, yeah, there it is. And uh, when he said, far comes a prophet that I think you ought to listen to, brother, that was it. That was it. P.E. Yes, Wonderful. And, and, and when I've had the honor of interviewing him, I told him that. I said, it's probably the, for men, for women, it's always, they're always going to say Lauryn Hill. And for men, 95% of the time, they're going to say some public enemy album, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> some public enemy yeah. album, for sure. But, but you know what? You know what? I got to take that back. Because mm, mm. when I came in the mosque, uh, you said all time? Man, probably every Cam album that it was ever made. Okay, okay, okay. So you saying, Cam. So you saying it Made in America was one of your favorite albums of all time? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> the reason why the reason why was because it set the attitude and the tone for every movement that I made on a daily basis. I rolled out to that. When when Cam said, FOI rider to make it understood. Yes, sir. Yes, oh, sir. I, I understood. I understood. And we moved like that. We moved in that vein. That's it was Cam was in 54. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He yes, was sir. there. I had access to brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm talking about you talk about theme music. This is what we bumping. We, we got bundles in the back. And and we bumping cam and we going to the hood. This is this is how we was moving and was ready and prepared for, for whatever was going to cross our path. Cam was the soundtrack to our movement. Oh, praise yes, you. sir. Yes, sir. And we well, you know growing in Chicago. I mean, Cam was, it was going to be, it was a Cam house in my household and all of the soldiers <laughs> was going to be playing Cam. And when I had another interview for everybody watching, go back, my interview with, with uh, Brother Cam was phenomenal. And I got to tell him every time I see him in person, I'm like, well, I respect you on and off stage and being around celebrities, especially in Atlanta, you, some people you like, but then you see him in person, it's like, I don't really know if they really, what they, every time I see Brother Cam, it's like, Oh yeah, it's official. I believe that he, every, all his lyrics, I believe it. I believe it. Cam, <laughs> everything, everything. Cam is, Cam is everything that you hear on the record, and and he's the same in person. Absolutely. But spiritually, that brother is a giant. Um, he's he's a study brother. His yes, brother, his brother, brother Ruben Muhammad is the brother who I recited to, uh, coming into the mosque. Mm. You know, brother Ruben is a student minister now. I think somewhere in North Carolina, uh, something like that. Mm -hmm. But um, he's always been cold. So just that their whole family is a family of uh, spiritual spiritual giants under the leadership of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And, uh, you know, even his nephews are a part of Salam Nation, which yes, is, sir, yes, sir. you know, shout out to Salam Nation out of Los Angeles, that hip hop group. Man, y'all uh, tap in, uh, Laura Rocker and uh, uh, Oh God, Y.O., you know. Those brothers are doing great things um, uh, 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 out there in Los Angeles. Those, and two of the members, Brother Jabril, those are uh, Brother Cam's nephews, Brother Ruben's nephews that are in the group as well. Okay. And um, that's the, that, that, we keep breeding giants. You know, the, the, the West is, the, 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 the West is historic, man. I'm trying to tell you. Salam Nation. Beautiful. Praise me so I Thank everyone who's showing love. 
my brother, Brother Roosevelt, out of New Orleans, brother man, it's nothing but love for you, Brother Roosevelt, sending nothing but love to you, a soldier on the front line, always holding it down. Okay, yes, sir. Um, brother Martin, two more questions for you. We get to go. I was waiting to see in the comments. They were they were trying to people from all over Phoenix was trying to figure out who the captain was. They saying Captain Amin. Amin, Amin, <laughs> Amin yes, sir. Captain Amin. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Brother Amin, he he put it on my mind. This is the brilliance, the brilliance of brother to how to maneuver under the most difficult circumstances of my life, dealing with the real enemy in my face, dealing with life or death. He 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 gave me the roadmap. And uh, I, I and I'll be eternally grateful to him, Sister Dr. Patina, as well as uh, Minister Jabril, who called me on the phone, mm. and uh, and 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 put his stamp on Sister. And you know, I, I give her credit for saving my wife's life and bringing my bringing my uh, my child into the world. For all praise to Allah, and my brother Rashad uh, told me he said it's the power of attorney is what you were trying to say earlier. They were yes, to... power of attorney. Man, yes. shout out to PO. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, sir. Okay, great. Uh, well, my my last question for you is, what do you want your legacy to be, brother Mark? <laughs> like Tupac said, I just want I just want to be a soldier. Oh, praise to Allah. Yes, sir. Well, I think that you are that. And based off of the comments and the people who, what type of people show you love, the military definitely understands and everybody's tapping in all across the country. Can't wait to put this on YouTube. Thank you for being a sincere brother, Martin. Every time I've always seen you, you doing nothing but love, continue to work with, you know, all the people, but continue to push the line for the FOI. We admire that. Thank you for your sacrifice, brother Martin, on behalf of myself, yes, my family, and the viewing audience of the People's Podcast for your sacrifice and the sacrifice of your family. Let your children, yeah. all, let your children know that we we support them and show them nothing but love. Yes, sir. Long live, long live aside the God. Oh yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, Daniel, but Daniel E says thank Allah for the captains that for why the mind of and GCC. Praise be to Allah. This is Joshua Leonard Muhammad signing off with the People's Podcast. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum salam, sir.